Okay, um, we're going to continue along with our discussion of uh, Laplace transforms and their applications. And again, we want to remind you that at Digital University, um, hundreds of new videos are in preparation right now that cover a wide range of topics. Also, there are free reports available uh, at that website. And again, uh, very important, your comments and your responses were really taken to heart. We're hoping that we can present some difficult subject matter in a very, um, hopefully, user-friendly form that can help you with your course load. Okay, um, in this video, we're going to continue along here with the FOSS transforms. So far, we have determined FOSS transforms for two different types of functions. What we're going to do in this video is develop a tool that can help us determine the class transforms much more readily and also something that we need to know to solve the differential equations. And that's this. Suppose that we have a function f of x and we determine what is the class transform is. Now suppose we take the derivative of that function. What will the corresponding Laplace transform be? So we start off with our basic definition. That is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of our function, which is this, times e to the minus sx dx. And if you were presented this to you as an uh, integral to solve, hopefully you look at that, you would think that this should be a candidate to integrate by parts, which is exactly correct. Remember how the formula goes. The integral of u dv equals uv minus the integral of b u and clearly then for the dv part of the integral that would be this and this would be the u part of the integral so this we could integrate very easily that's just going to be f of x so we set it up like this we say let u equal e to the minus sx du will equal e to the minus sx times minus s dx dv that equals f prime x dx or in other words dv that's equal to d f of x dx dx. So those go away. And when I integrate this, that's just going to be equal to f of x. So v equals f of x. Okay. So use the formula, our integral becomes this equals u times v, here's u, and here's v, so that's equal to f of x times e to the minus sx, x goes from 0 to infinity, and here's the troublesome part right here, We'll have to deal with that. Minus the integral of v du. And here's v. Here's du. This is a constant. We have minus s. So that will be plus s times integral of v du. That's this. Just like this x goes from 0 
to infinity. And that's the Laplace transform now of F prime of X. Now let's look at what we have. Let's start over here. We have the integral of F of X e to the minus SX except this should be dx. Okay, uh, the du is this expression here. But this, this is just the Laplace transform of f of x. And remember, we said that we determined what that is. So this is some function f of s. And we determine what this is. This is our this is the definition of the Laplace transform of f of x. We're saying yes, we had that function, and we determine what this Laplace transform is. So we know what this is. Now let's go over to here. If we put if this part right here of the exponent is positive. Then we put infinity, and that will be e to the minus infinity. So s has to be greater than zero, and that's what we said over here for this. We did our during our first video introduction to the Laplace transforms, so we're being consistent here. So if this is equal to then we're going to have e to the infinity in the denominator, so that's going to be zero minus, I put 0 in for x, that's going to be e to the 0, which is 1, and then we're going to have f of 0. So, here's our formula. We're saying that if we had a function f of x, and we determine it's the Foss transform, we know what this is, then if we have f prime of x, this Laplace transform is going to be s times this minus f of 0. So here, we started the, uh, the video saying we had a function f of x. We determined what this Laplace transform was. It's f of s. Now we want to know what is the Laplace transform. We take the derivative of it. And from here, we get this. Well, that would be equal to s times the Laplace transform of f of x, which you know what that is. We determine that. So it's going to be s times this minus f of 0 minus our function evaluated at 0. And that then is how we can find, once we know the function, if we have its derivative, here's how we can find the Laplace transform. We don't have to go through and integrate it all over again. If you know what this is, then right away we can figure it out where it is for its derivative. Now, what we're going to do in the next video I don't think we have time to do it in this video. We're going to use this formula up here. And we're going to say, all right then, what would it be for this? Or what would it be for this? In the next video, using this and this, we're going to show that in this case here, it's now going to be s squared times f of s minus s times f of 0 minus f prime of 0. We'll prove this in the next video. But what it means is this. Here we have a function f of x and we determine what this Laplace transform is. Now, if we take the second derivative of that function, the new Laplace transform, that's going to equal s squared 
times this, minus s times the function when, f, when, f, when x is 0, minus, we take the derivative of the function and put 0 in for x. We do that, and that then would be the Laplace transform of the second derivative of the function. We don't have to go through and evaluate an integral all over and determine that. Furthermore, well, hopefully you can see there's a pattern here. Um, for this one, this is going to come out to be equal to then, here we're going to have s cubed f of s minus s squared f of 0 minus s f prime of 0 minus this. So for the third derivative, we know what this is, then we want the Laplace transform of the third derivative of the function. It's going to be s cubed times whatever is the Laplace transform was, minus s squared, for the function is evaluated at 0, minus s, here you take the derivative of the function evaluated at 0, then here you take the second derivative of the function evaluated at 0, and that will be a Laplace transform of its third derivative. You can see the pattern just keeps on going like this. In reality, these are the ones here that we have to be familiar with, and there's a real easy way that we can remember them. But first of all, come back, join us in the next video, and we're going to prove that this is true using this relation here. So come back, join us for that, and we'll pick up in our discussion.